Okay, I said I was going to make a video speaking against the observance of Christmas practices and the Christmas tradition. And I'm going to prove using scripture. For those of you that don't know and that like to make all kinds of excuses, well, now there is no excuse if you are one of those that likes to partake in these uh, ancient occult and pagan traditions. Well, for those of you that don't know, there are verses in Scripture, a.k.a. the Bible, that speak against the observance of Christmas. Not only the practices, but this whole tradition that's been handed down from generation to generation. Okay, so... I'm going to begin with Jeremiah chapter 10, and I'm going to read the first five verses. Again, this is not my opinion. This is right from Scripture to prove without a shadow of a doubt that it is prohibited. And I'm going to explain why. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1 says, Listen to the message that the Most High has spoken to you, nation of Israel. Verse 2, this is what the Most High says. Do not learn the practices of the nations. Don't be frightened by the signs in the sky because the nations are frightened by them. That was verse 2. Verse 3, the religion, listen close. Verse 3, the religion of the people is worthless. See that? Again, the religion... Of what people? The heathen, the Gentiles, non-Israelites, by descent, their religion is worthless. Woodcutters cut down trees from the forest. The hands of craftsmen prepare them with axes. Now, doesn't that sound like what a woodcutter would do to... Chop a tree down from the forest and put it for sale in this time of year around the Christmas time. Woodcutters cutting down trees from the forest and the craftsman prepares them with the axes. Verse 4 What else do they do? Well, the craftsman decorates them with silver and gold. And fasten them together with hammers and nails so that they won't fall over. Seem familiar to you? Verse 5. These trees are like scarecrows in cucumber gardens. They aren't able to speak. They have to be carried because they can't walk. Don't be afraid of them. They can't harm you. Again. This is exactly what people do when they set up their little trees for Christmas. Uh, the people that sell it, they send somebody over to the, to the woods to get a tree. They cut it down and then they decorate it with little uh, ornaments. You know, isn't that idolatry? And here, let me finish up this verse. Verse 5 says that, these trees are like scarecrows, again, in cucumber gardens. They aren't able to speak. They have to be carried because they can't walk. Don't be afraid of them. They can't harm you, obviously. And what else? They can't do you any good either. See that? That proves right from Scripture. This is speaking against the idolatry that many are involved when they... uh involves themselves in decorating, spending their mammon and time on these useless idols and traditions that have occult backgrounds. So, again, I'm going to go to Isaiah now. See, I got another verse. I'm going to give a second witness to this. I'm going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 44. 
and verse 19. Again, this is Isaiah 44 and verse 19. This is what it says. No one stops to think. No one has enough knowledge or understanding to say, I burned half of the wood in the fire. I also baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and ate it. Now, this is talking about... All right, let me get the full... Uh, let me get the full full scope of it okay so okay here it is beginning this is Isaiah chapter 44 beginning with verse 14 just to give you a quick background on what it's talking about see that verse 14 says that they individuals cut down cedars for themselves and they choose fir trees or oaks see that it's just, this is talking about trees how they uh, individuals uh, acquire these trees, these oaks. They let them grow strong among the trees in the forest. They plant cedars and the rain makes them grow. Verse 15 says that these trees become fuel for people to burn. Isn't that what they do during uh, winter time? Now this is I'm not, this I'm not gonna speak against it because this is what people do, you know, to burn wood. They use the tree, they chop it, they, you know, it, they put it to use, right? They don't have it just sitting there idle looking pretty you know they they make uh chop the wood chop the tree make wood out of it and they use it to you know burn fuel whatever they may need it for you know it says that they uh they use it for fuel to burn whether to warm themselves to cook something so they take some of them and warm themselves with them as it says right here they start fires and bake bread you see that to cook something to eat it says here that they also make gods from these trees and worship them. Isn't that what they do in Christmas time? They decorate it. They invest all this time. Again, I've just made a few videos about uh, idolatry. Now, I'm talking to the whole world here. Whoever runs into this video, you've been warned. You are not to observe these practices. It says that they, they, make, they make them into carved statues and bow in front of them. Isn't that what you do when you bow before the tree? Half of the wood they burn in the fire. Over this half they roast meat that they can eat until they are full. They also warm themselves and say, ah, we are warm. We can see the fire. Okay, that's understandable. You, you put it to good use. That's fine. No problem there. Verse 17. But the rest of the wood they make into gods, carved statues. Okay, maybe not to that extreme extent, but... Well, you'll see where this is going. Okay, so they bow down to them and worship them. They pray to them saying, rescue us because you are our gods. Okay, obviously they don't do that, but keep going. Remember, keep the subject and object. The subject is we're talking about trees and how even th th some of that wood was used to carve images. So, okay, it says that they don't, they do, it says, verse 18 says they do don't know or understand anything. Their eyes are plastered shut so they can't see, and their minds are closed so they can't understand. Here's the verse I was looking for, verse 19. I'm going to highlight it. I just wanted to backtrack so you guys don't think uh, I'm taking this out of context or making out of it, you know, because I want to show without a shot of a doubt. This is the second witness I say. We just read Jeremiah speaking against this. Verse 19, let's read what it says. No one stops to think. No one has enough knowledge or understanding to say, Okay, I burned half of the wood in the fire. I also baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and ate it. Now I am making the rest of the wood into a disgusting thing and bowing to a block of wood? Isn't that what they do? And okay, let me let me get another translation. I like I like the amplified version. Let's just get that translation, you know, because I want to make sure I hit them hard with this, and you know, people ain't gonna have no excuses. You know, I know there are a lot of people out there that you know they rather hear a soft word, but you know, I'm gonna give it to you raw. You know, this okay. So, all right, here we go. Verse nineteen. Again, 
as I just read, and no one considers in their mind, nor has knowledge and understanding enough to say to himself, "I burned part of this log in the fire, and also I have baked bread on its coals, and have roasted meat and eaten it, and shall I make the remainder of it into an abomination?" The very essence of what is disgusting, detestable, and shamefully vile in the eyes of a jealous God. You hear that? Now here comes the kicker. Shall I fall down and worship the stock of a tree? A block of wood without consciousness or life? Isn't that what people do when they bow down to pick up their gifts? It's kind of like worshiping it. They get put the, put the little presents around the tree, all decorated, the little idol, and they got to go near the tree to pick up, bend over and pick up the little gifts. That's what it says here. Remember, we're just, it's so Isaiah speaking about these few verses up into verse 19. It's talking about the tree, that people use it for what they need, and they also pick up the habit of idolatry. So they use a remainder of it as something that is the detestable before God and it makes him jealous it says that shall I fall down and worship the stock of a tree in other words should I fall down and worship you know a block of wood a stick of wood the stick of the tree that's what it is a block of wood a stick of wood without consciousness or life so again it's all over scripture let me go back You know, because I, I, I see way too many brothers and sisters making excuses. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell it to, I'm going to give it to them raw. I know, you know, it doesn't sound nice, but it's the truth. You know, and look look what it says here in verse 8. People that do this. Again, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. And we just read these regarding the trees, right? How, how they decorate them. It's describing the, the Christmas trees. These trees are like scarecrows and cucumber gardens. They're on it, blah, blah, blah. Go to, go to verse 8. It says, They are complete idiots. They learn nonsense from wooden idols. Man, if that's not a slap in the face to wake you up, I don't know what is. Because here's the thing. I see many compromise with these uh, occult traditions, you know, these uh, many so-called Christ followers, you know, even the most learned ones, you know, they, they know all these kinds of knowledge in regards to scripture, all these kinds of secrets in scripture. That's all fine and dandy. But what good is uh, wisdom and knowledge without obedience, right? What, what good is it for me to know all this stuff and yet still go in there and, and uh, break uh, the commandments? Nothing. Wisdom without action, I'm saying, uh, without obedience, you know, it's of no good use, you know. It, it, you can share the wisdom, but it's, it's like a hypocrite, you know, I'm speaking, don't do this, oh, don't do that. But yet, whether it's a greater sin or a, or a minor sin, it doesn't matter. Sin is sin, you know. That I would be a hypocrite to tell you, oh, you're a sinner, this and that. Yet yeah, I'm over here uh, uh, with my family or whatever involved in these uh, Christmas uh, uh, traditions, you know. Just for once, uh, I don't observe this, you know. My family would like to observe this uh, unholy tradition, but unfortunately they don't like to invest in it and thus they're left wanting. But to me that's wonderful because... By them not being able to, you know, indulge in these things, it it, it uh it makes it easier for me and uh, you know, easier on the eye, not looking around, knowing that we got all kinds of Christmas junk going on all around. No, because my my house is empty right now. I, we don't serve it like that. They do my my uh family, but you know they they don't get all this stuff. They don't get all crazy. They just keep it like any regular day. If I'm gonna give you something, you know, that's you know just. Neutral. No, you don't see these crazy lights and all that. No, none of that garbage invested in, in the observance of Christmas. No, you don't need one day out of the whole year just to to you know figure out that you need to give something. You know, and, and then you give to each other, which probably aren't even in need. You know, when the people that are truly in need, they're sitting outside in the cold somewhere, 
waiting, praying to God that somebody might, uh, you know, send them some relief. So uh, it's just, just stupid, man. Like it says in verse 8, this is complete idiocy, you know. People learn nonsense from these wooden idols because they bow down to them. So like I said, there are many brothers and sisters out there. They know all kinds of mysteries, know all kinds of revelation. That's all fine and dandy. But I see many of them like to compromise with these occult traditions, as I just said. If there are occult traditions with the label Christ over it. Now, whatever the reason is that they uh, compromise with these things, I don't know. It could be that they have families. It could be that... You know, it's just, you know, it's sweet. So they like that, you know, they like that sweet and uh, sweet part, I guess. It, they, they just like it, you know. But like I said, it, the word speaks against it. No matter how sweet it is, no matter what has changed over it, it, it doesn't matter. As the scriptures we just read, you know. So your opinion, one's opinion does not matter when it comes to the word of God, period. One of the least sins is no smaller sin compared to this one here, the observance of Christmas or any other tradition, you know, Halloween. As I made a video on that as well. So sin is sin. Not honoring the commandments is transgressing them. So check yourself, you know. If you have a hard time letting go of these things, just ask the Savior, tell Christ, Hey, dear Savior, dear Heavenly Father, I want your help deliverance from the observance because that's what I did you know I asked remove from me help me remove anything that is displeasing to you that it, uh, it's not right I don't care you know anything that needs to go remove it from me and whether any kind of traditions I included that any pagan you know I was aware of it but most people they're aware of it like I said but what good is that knowledge if you are aware of it but you're not keeping the commandments they say oh yeah yeah it does speak some of them do even point to jeremiah chapter 10 but they don't then they say in my opinion you know i don't think there's nothing wrong with it well again your opinion does not matter when it comes to the word of god you know you got you either like i said just because you may not be doing all these kinds of crazy sins yet you're trying to slip one of these in like pagan the observance of pagan holidays that's still just as great as any other abomination, you know? Just because it's small, it doesn't mean that it's not transgressing. So, like I said, man, people need to start getting educated because, remember, I'm quoting uh, the words of Yeshua. This is from Mark 7, 9 now. I'm reading them off my, my Bible, but you can go check it out. Mark 7, verse 9, as it says, Yeshua told them, for well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. And that's what many do. They reject this commandment against idolatry, against the observing of these uh, Christmas practices. You know? And it's not this exactly what some so-called believers do. <laughs> they, you know, reject the commandment. Oh, but we're just observing Christ. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's celebrate Christmas, said no one ever in Scripture. All right? No one said that ever in Scripture. Yeah, let's celebrate Christmas, said who? No one. So, show me the verse. Point the verse out, and then, okay, I'll make a video and admit, okay, the Most High allows it. But nope, it does not. It just speaks against it. Does the word contradict itself? Nope, because if it did, then it would have no meaning. And no purpose to it. So, again, also James 4.4. 4. Let me read that to you. Uh, it says, You are like unfaithful wives, having illicit love affairs with the world, and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So, who, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes a stand as an enemy of God. And that's what it is. By you diving into these worldly pagan uh, traditions, you're making yourself an enemy of God. It doesn't matter how much knowledge or secrets you know. You know, again, what good is it for you to share and not keep them? That's nothing more than hypocrisy. So, you know, this is a strong message going out to, it might convict you. I know it's not easy to accept. And it's hard once you're in that. You got to compromise with it. But like I said, don't get offended by it. Just simply do what I did. I don't. 
if it cuts you in the heart, just ask, go ask a savior. He'll deliver you from it. If you don't want to, now that's a different thing. You're willingly choosing, you know. It's like man, any bad habit that I would have, you know, if I choose uh, clinging to it, then that's that's on me. But no, I just ask him, purify me of anything that you don't want in me and let your spirit uh, fully dwell within me. That's just ask and you shall receive. You have not because you ask, ask not. So... Yeah, I just wanted to make this video because, you know, again, uh, I've been seeing a lot of Christians trying to justify their observance against these ungodly holidays, and it, it shouldn't be. There's no excuse for them. And, and uh, okay, let, okay, let me just uh, go back. I want to make sure there are no loopholes in this. Uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was a book of Acts. Chapter. Uh, let me see here if I could bring it to remembrance. Bear with me. I think. Oh, it was Colossians. I'm sorry. Colossians. Yeah. Because I had a little. Uh. Hold on, let me get the verse first before I go any further. Okay, so, okay, I got it. Colossians. Colossians, what is it, chapter 2? Chapter 2, let's just go to chapter 2, Colossians, because uh, it was a few days ago that I got into... Uh, I, I had a, a f I exchanged a few words with a so-called believer in the faith, and he threw this uh, verse at me. Uh, let me see, where's it at? <clears throat> he threw verses uh, sixteen and seventeen at me. He said to try to justify why they observe this uh, holiday. It says. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 it says therefore let no one judge you because of what you eat or drink or about the observance of annual holy days say that big difference holy days not holidays which are nothing more than days uh, or cult days with the Christian label over them sugar coated candy coated see that holy days let no one Judge you because of what you eat or drink or about the observance of annual holidays, new moon festivals, new moon festivals, see that? Or weekly worship days. This is talking about God's festivals, not the world's festivals, not these the fallen ones' festivals. Verse 17, these are a shadow of things to come, but the body that casts a shadow belongs to Christ. And I, some of them misinterpret this verse. Okay, if that's the case, then... Okay, so Christ don't mind that, you know, these occult practices are just using his name. And really, it's giving credit to, you know, the fallen ones since we're looking at observing their pagan holidays. Okay, so if that's the case, then uh, I might as well, um, I don't know, uh, observe uh, Halloween, right? It's okay to indulge in the, the biggest uh, occult day that they have and just, mm, you just dress up as Jesus and it should be okay, right? While we're, we're just going out there having fun, while these uh, reprobates are over there sacrificing uh, live people in some hellhole God knows where, you know? Is that okay? That's the same thing happens in these uh, supposed uh, Christmas day that it has to do it, uh, with the birth of Christ, as they say. But let's go down to verse 18 for those that are trying to justify, the uh, trying to throw Colossians Verses 16 and 17. Okay, verse 18. Let's let's read further. Let's see what it says. Let no one who delights in false humility in the worship of angels tell you that you don't deserve a prize. Okay, now let me get a better translation. Okay, let's go to the King James now. This one gets the message across. Remember, there is no perfect version, but sometimes you need to get the right version to get the point across and I think this is the one that's gonna do it okay so again it says right here verse 16 again let no man therefore judge you 
in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day, not holiday, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the bodies of Christ. So is it okay then? Since we're in the new covenant, let's see. Verse 18, let no man, see that? We keep reading on down. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary, willingly, humility and worshiping of angels. See that? Let Pay attention. Let no man cheat you out of your reward voluntarily, willingly. You know? With the false sense of uh, humility into worshiping angels. Intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So don't let no one cheat you out of your reward by tricking you into worshiping angels, which are, this is what all these holidays are. You see that? Like the, like I said, I, I had a, an exchange of words with an individual, you know, I had uh, exchanged some words with this individual and he tried to justify, you know, since we're under the new covenant, blah, blah, blah. He threw these two verses verses 16 and 17 from 2nd Colossians and I threw him the verse that was be uh, below verse 17 this one that says let no one beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels you see that when you read a little further down it just destroyed his whole defense see that that no one so what is this talking about worshiping angels we're not worshiping angels well again find out where you get all these uh origins of Christmas where do they come from I mean Jeremiah we just read Jeremiah was speaking against it right the observance of the Christmas tree and all that decorating and all that crap Isaiah too you know so again you have two witnesses and Colossians is another witness but people think that it's okay to observe any holiday no holy day read that holy day New moon, Sabbath days, not pagan days, all right? So on that note, I'm not going to ramble. I just want to, I'm fired up because there's too many Christians out there that are really well learned, know a lot of stuff. But when it comes to the little things, I'm noticing they, they, they're leaning towards the sweet stuff. And no, we, we got to take a stand, you know. We got to uplift each other. Worship, we worship the Father in spirit and in truth, you know. Uh, our actions speak louder than our words. And let it be thus. Shalom.